Do you know what I love? I love that it is storming right now, like storming. It has been hot and muggy. It still is hot and muggy while there is cloud coverage and wind and sounds of rain and thunder in the distance. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love storms. Anyone else? Not necessarily storms in my life, but I definitely love um, storms outside, especially when it's relief from insane heat. So anyways, welcome, you guys. Really excited about this session. This is pursuing your call without losing them in the process. And by them, yes, I'm talking about our kids. I'm also just talking about our our families and really everything we try to hold together. Um, how do you pursue anything outside of your children and homeschooling when that is such an all-encompassing task and part of your life that's in front of you? So that is what we're going to be talking about today. This is part of an online convention that we are doing. Um, it's very casual. We're basically going live and sharing stories and encouragement and all the things. We've been going live each morning with worship and uh, word and just seeking the Lord together um, and talking about homeschooling and we're going to be talking about marriage and we're talking about parenting and um, just all sorts of things. So it's just been a opportunity for God to really speak to us, whatever he wants to speak, whether it's about homeschooling or not is not really the point. So it's good. Um, but this session actually, it. It's part of my session I did this year, which is um, working in homeschooling. And as I was doing this session and, and this past year, I realized this is not just related to working. This is related to anyone who is doing absolutely anything outside of homeschooling. So we're going to be talking about, I'm hoping to give you some practical tips and tricks, but really what I feel like God has instilled in my heart about this specific topic, because it is no small topic. Um, my last time I did this session, I did not have near enough time. I did try to put my slides in here and for some reason they are not loading. So we're just going to trust that God says speak rather than look at visuals. Okay. So you guys are going to get to look at my face. I'm very sorry. Um, so it's going to be good. This is part of our online sale at the same time. So we do have a sale going on tomorrow is the last day of our sales. So um, those of you who've been sitting on decisions, we do have a quiz that we put together to help you know where to get started. And maybe someone can link that. I'm working on getting it up on the site. I um, was hoping to have it, but I'm not sure if it's up there yet, but it's going to be the same place as the high school quiz. So that should be an added resource to be able to help you. Um, but go ahead and ask your questions, you guys. You can ask questions tonight. We have a live video tonight and tomorrow night to help you with sale questions, shopping questions. And so don't panic. Don't freak out. But we are coming to a close of this. And yeah, we're going to see what God does with the, the last little bit of time that we have left. It's going to be good. All right. Can you hear the storm? Can you see it behind me? Uh, crazy. Okay. So let's get into it. Um, I want to talk a little bit about the fact that I think this is a topic that is very near and dear to God's heart. I think that he cares incredibly deeply about this topic. I think that as parents, um, as specifically mothers for the mothers that are watching this, but fathers as well, we have a tendency to think that everything revolves around our children. Now, do not get me wrong. It is an incredible, they're a blessing. They are our calling. There are so many things, but I started off my married life. And by starting off my married life, I also started off my baby making life. And I remember saying to my husband and saying to, you know, people that I would talk to that this was it, like this was, and one day there was so much inside of me. I was almost frustrated and discontent because I thought one day I'm going to be able to do the things that God has put in my heart. But for now, I'm just called to be a mother and this is, you know, all I can do. And I need to make sure that my kids get all of me. Now, there are stages and seasons of your life where that is what God says. And so it's important if God is asking you that, that you are in that season. But there are other seasons of your life where, where God says move. And we have gotten caught up in a theology where God wants to have us be obedient. And I think that's been a, a theme that we haven't really spoken out loud, but throughout this entire convention, 
Our theology is our understanding of God. Our knowledge and education is our understanding of the world and understanding of how things work and us trying to make sense of what we see and know and experience. But the reality is, is that none of us can fully understand God. And as soon as we try to put boxes on a Christian's walk or relationship with God, and more specifically put boxes around God and who he is and what he looks like, we are going to find ourselves frustrated. We are going to find ourselves in conflict with one another because none of us can have the full picture of who God is. Even Moses, who was hidden in the cleft of the rock, only saw a part, only saw a piece because God was far too big and far too holy for him to see it all. We need everybody and we all have to be obedient to God. It doesn't mean that if your walk is different than my walk, that one of us is wrong possibly, but if we're both trusting and listening to the Holy Spirit and Jesus and being obedient to him, then God might actually be calling us to different things and he might be giving us different things. So I would say at the the undertone of this entire session is no matter what God is putting his finger on in you, whether that is a job, a career, um, a ministry, whether it is uh, a relationship, whatever it may be, God is putting his finger on something, something he is calling you to step into or you have been wrestling with stepping into. And I want you to remember and, and take a little bit of time during the session to tear down the, the thoughts in your head that you have to do it. You have to do it one way or another, or you can't do it this way or that way, or this time is not the time. And that is the time your preconceived notions of, of what it's supposed to look like. And instead have open hands and an open heart and an open mind and say, God, I am willing to do whatever you want me to do whenever you want me to do it, despite the fact that it might look different than what I think it does. Because I think that place, that place of true surrender is a place that God can actually build on. And I think we often come to him with so many things. We've built so many things up in our minds that he can't even start building because there's too much there to deal with. And so instead, we get to be in a season that, for example, Jonathan and I are in where we are waiting and it's been frustrating. But during this time of waiting, God has been removing some of those preconceived notions and ideas that have been in our heads of how God is going to do it or when he's going to do it or what it's going to look like. And he said, let's just get rid of all that. And when you're truly ready to say, not my will, but yours be done, then now I can start to move because you're really, truly giving me the reins in your life. So anyways, that's just my preface of all of this. But I do believe that if you are listening to this session, it is not by accident. I think if you're listening to this session, it is um, God has something to say to you. And if you do share the session, which I would love for you to share it, but I put no pressure on you to do that, um, share it with somebody that you think needs to hear that, someone who would be encouraged by that. I would way rather the one person who needs to hear it than the massive groups that don't really want to hear it or won't receive it anyways. You know what I mean? Okay. So are we ready? Let's pray. Holy Spirit, we invite you into this session. We invite you to come and speak. We invite you to come and move. We ask that we would have fertile minds to be able to receive whatever you have, fertile hearts, God, that the the soil of our heart would be um, ready to receive what you have for us. I pray that we would have open ears, open minds, open hearts, open eyes. Father, I pray that we would just be here to receive whatever you want to say. I pray that you would just guide and direct us, even as we think or recall things, as we're listening to this. I pray you would bring things to our attention and our remembrance remembrance in our minds. I pray that our families would be of one accord when we talk about this afterwards, whatever you laid on our hearts. And I pray that the fruit from this session would go forth and it would bear much. God, I pray that you would just do a work and be faithful to finish what you have started in us. And we are just bringing the session before you and saying, we invite you to speak and we give you permission to take this session wherever you would take it in your name. Amen. Okay. Are we ready? So there are many, many, many people that are here, I believe. And there aren't many, many, many people here. (laughs) There are people that are listening to this right now who are in it. 
you're in it. You are walking it out. You have been given some mandate, some calling, some purpose, a job, whatever it may be. You're in the trenches of it right now. You sometimes feel like you are dropping balls all around you. You feel like you're failing. You go to bed at night and you just can't even sleep because the guilt and the shame and the, you know, would have, could have, should have. Um, your kids come to you and anyone, your kids come to you and say, you know, mommy or daddy, I just don't see you enough and I don't spend time with you and I just miss you and and you feel like you are dropping balls and that you're just not cut out for this. So some of you are walking in victory in this and you can't relate to that, but you're in it. Others of you are currently in that spot. You're in that place of, can you hear it? It's a storm. You're in that place of the storm. You're in the place of wrestling and um, and God has some some real tools, I believe, that he wants to give you today. So you need to take heed and pay attention. Others of you are not there at all. You are on the side of a raging river and you are dipping your toe in or considering dipping your toe in. You feel the call of God saying, come a little deeper, or you have this interest or this passion, or you feel like there's more to you, but you have settled. You have given up. You have decided that this is not the time because you have established that there is a time and a season for you to do whatever God's laid on your heart. And for some of you, God is going to be saying, no, no, I'm calling you out into the deep water. So depending on your situation, this is going to mean different things to different people. But I do want to give you a glimpse. I want to share my testimony and my story. And I want to, more than anything else, um, just release the the grace that I walk in today um, because of what I've walked through. So that is what I hope this session is going to be. It's going to be great. And let's get into it. Okay, so first of all, many of you know what I do, you know who I am, and some of you don't, especially if you've shared this and this is someone totally new that is coming upon this for the first time. My name is Rebecca. Um, I'm a homeschool mom of five. I have been homeschooled. I was homeschooled almost all the way through my own growing up years, and I have homeschooled from the beginning until now. My oldest is turning 15, so I have been immersed in the world of home education for as long as I can remember, and I have loved every minute of it. I've loved home education. I loved being homeschooled, and I have loved homeschooling my kids. I have not always done it well but I have loved it. Okay. So that is my background. That's where I came from. And, and it's everything I ever wanted. When I was young, I remember I wanted to, I knew I had a gift of teaching. I was passionate about it. And I wanted to grow up and I wanted to have kids and I wanted to teach my own kids. This was my greatest aspiration and desire in life. When I got to be older, I graduated when I just turned 16. I went to Bible school. I was the youngest person there. Can everyone hear me? Can you guys still hear me? Because I feel like I need to keep stopping, but maybe you can hear me just fine. But it is loud. You're all good? Someone comment so I can continue. <laughs> it's very distracting for me. You can hear me. Okay. I'm going to take that one comment, Jennifer, and I'm going to run. Okay. Thunder. My daughter's going to be freaking out. Maybe she'll come running in here in the rain and get me wet. Okay. So I always wanted to be a mom and specifically I wanted to be a homeschooler. It was everything I wanted. So when I got to be, I graduated, I went to college and I was kind of, you know, floating really just waiting to get married. I remember my mom saying, why don't you go do this? Or why don't you go do that? I had been accepted into the University of Calgary. Um, I really actually wanted to go. If I could do anything, I was going to go on a, a DTS to Israel um, I wanted to, to just, honestly, I remember saying to my mom, there's no point because I'm going to get married and have kids. So I'm literally going to waste my money going and doing something when I know that I'm going to marry young and I'm going to get married and I'm going to have kids. It's what I'm made to do. I knew it. So I, I had this like sense. And when I was 17 and you'll hear a little bit of our story tomorrow, when I was 17, I met Jonathan and I was in college and career already. I had my license. I was living on my own. Though I was young, I had already been graduated for a year and a half, um, almost two. And so I was I was mature for my age. And so I met Jonathan, and um, and he was going to the RCMP. And so when we got married, we started having kids right away. Right away, we started having kids. And and 
it was everything I ever wanted. Here I was living out my dream. But in case you don't know me, I am an energizer bunny. Okay. So I'm like, I'm like, okay, this is great. Like, let's have more kids. Let's have more kids. And so we have like more and more and more kids. Cause I, I truly was made for that. That is my absolute gift. I am, I am good with babies and kids in general. I love them. Do you know when I see you guys at conferences and you bring me your kids and I, I, it's everything I can do to not want to just get down on my knees and talk to your child. When I talk about having our gather around homeschool convention, um, I want your kids in the sessions with us. And in fact, if we were to separate and have a kids program and an adults program, I would give somebody else the adults and I would go take your kids. Like I love kids. I love your kids. I love all kids. And I have such a heart and a passion for um, seeing them. And so anyways, it was, it was my dream. I was living out my dream. But there was more. I have so much in me. I always have. I am driven. I am passionate. I am not a rester. And what I loved about having babies was that it caused me to rest. And I truly did. It was the one season in my life that I absolutely took it. I don't often sit. I don't often not do something. But when I had a new little baby, I gave myself absolute permission to ignore my entire world outside my four walls in my house. And I was all in. And so I would just rest and enjoy this new precious little life that was in front of us. And so I, I had done it and I was doing well and I was loving it, but I just, I just was so driven you guys. So I had a sewing business. I was leading worship at our church. I was, um, helping out with youth. I was involved in whatever I could possibly get involved in. If, if there was something that I could do, I wanted to do it. Um, after my sewing business, I mean, I did, I did everything. I've, I've done Mary Kay. I've done Avon. I've done, Avon was when I was a teenager, but, um, I've done it all. I, honestly. I, and then Plexus came out and I did Plexus and oils came out and I did oils. I mean, Osborne came out and I did Osborne. I mean, I did all the things I was driven and I was determined. And so here I am homeschooling my kids and loving this, but at the same time, feeling this pull and this drive and this drivenness to do more. I wanted more in my life. I feel like I had, I had so much I wanted to pour out and, and my kids were still so young and the most I could pour out was kisses and hugs and love. I needed to pour out words and what God was laying on my heart. I just, I don't know how to explain it, but I've always felt like I am just a bubbling brook and I just need to bubble. So at the same time, I am on fire fire for Jesus. And I always have been. And I wanted to live my life for him. I wanted to do something that mattered. I wanted to, to, to make ground for the kingdom of God. I wanted my life to be more than just going through the motions. And so I remember just being discontent and frustrated. I remember thinking, you know, God, surely you made me for more than this. Someone's calling me. Who is that? This is so weird because I am on do not disturb. Just a minute. I'm on do not disturb and there is nothing open on my computer. FaceTime is closed. What is happening? Oh, aw, that's Facebook. It's Aaliyah Spooner is, is calling me my daughter. Let's just, just a second. Ah, I should have just answered her. Yeah just done that right in the middle of this, it would be great. Um, don't worry. I'll remember where I was or around where I was. It'll be good. Um, but I do need to just make sure I have a feeling that my kids, A, don't know I'm live and B, that they are maybe worried about the storm. So I am in a live. Are you okay? Okay. So, okay, she's good. So here I am telling you my testimony. Where am I in my testimony? I am in the discontent stages and wanting more with God. So we moved, we moved to an Island. And now I remember my kids are young. So yes, I'm homeschooling them and I'm doing a really great job, like an excellent, excellent job. I, I had all this energy and passion and, and in this discontented season, um, I really felt like God was saying no. And while I was, I, I still had a sewing business. I still did stuff, but I felt like he was saying, 
you need to invest in your kids. So there was this season in my life where God asked me to be content. There was a season in my life where God asked me to um, be still and know. And there was a season in my life where I was to just pour into this, these babies, and I did. So I was homeschooling. I was doing – I did Mother Goose time. I had all these packages and activities and songs and dancing. And, and I did so much with my kids. We did the whole praying mantis eggs. I mean – Poor Janaya, she hasn't seen any of this stuff, but we did it, okay? Um, we did the life cycle of a butterfly. I mean, we did all the things as a homeschool family and we loved it. We loved it. I was still doing things, but my kids actually needed less for me. Those of you who are like, I can't wait till my kids are older because they're going to need less. Mm. Wrongo, it's different, but your kids actually need more and more and more of you and it takes more intellectual um, and time. <laughs> Takes a whole lot more time and a whole lot more thought process. So fast forward, we move to a remote little island. Um, I remember when Jonathan, some of you have heard me tell this little story, but um, I remember he told me that it came about in a dream, which if you were in our morning session, Jonathan is a dreamer. And so he was praying for you guys to have dreams. And that's coming from somebody who has had many dreams, prophetic dreams over our family. And one of those was that we were going to move. And I remember he had this dream of us going to this place where there was indigenous people. Um, it was this island. It was it was remote. And that I was there and I was ministering to these people. And um, and we were there for this, for this short time and really, really invested. And so he told me his dream the next morning. I just start weeping and I don't even know why I'm crying. It just, I knew it was a God dream. And this is the confirmation that I was talking about. I often interpret his dreams. And throughout the day, I just felt like God was, he was going to call us. He was calling us. And so the next day, Jonathan got a call from staffing saying, would you be interested in being posted in Haida Gwaii? And when he told me this, I was like, Hawaii? Totally. I mean, does this even happen? Like Canadian police, they do, by the way. Canadian police go all over the world um, because it is a very uh, intensive training program and they actually do consultations with other police forces all over the world. So I had no idea. No, it was not Hawaii. It was Haida Gwaii. Go look it up and do some geography with your family. So it's just underneath Alaska. We actually, we could go onto these dotted islands and look out and we'd see the dotted islands of Alaska right there. Um, it is a very remote island. It takes a 12-hour ferry to get there from the middle of nowhere. So Vancouver Island is way down, okay, by Vancouver, above Washington. This is about 20 hours north of that. And so it was very, very remote and reserved and um, closed off from the world. And it was beautiful and it was glorious and God is in the ocean. And so here I was on this, like oh, pulled away from my family who I'd always lived close to for the most part and all my support and all our friends. And we just knew we were supposed to be there. And God just met with us there. I had an, a, an awakening in my, in my relationship with God that I hadn't had before. And I'd always been on fire. It had always been on fire, but there was something new. I encountered the Holy Spirit in a way I had not before. And I had prayed for it before, and I had sought it before, but there was just an unlocking and a releasing in this time. Well, we were here. We started a little home church. Um, there were no churches, really, where we were in, in Masset. There were no churches. And so we started a little home church. We met this amazing small community of people, just a handful of people who became like family to us. And in this season, I'm just starting out my blog and things are growing and changing. And it was like this swirling time of in our spirits and in our relationship with God, this intense growing um, and changing. And at the same time, God was blessing my business. He was blessing this review. And now I'm getting stuff shipped to the middle of nowhere, way up in this island. Um, and my business is growing and my pursuits are growing. At the same time, we're doing a home church. Every week we're leading worship and we're gathering and we're meeting. And, and so there was a lot of stuff happening at the same time. But remember, Remember, my kids were still relatively young. So at this point, they just came along with us. They were just in the swirl. And yes, we homeschooled, but it wasn't, it wasn't as big of a deal if there were gaps, if we fell behind a little bit because of the season that we were in and because of the age of our kids. So that was massive. And from there, we came back to Northern BC where we currently live. And that was kind of a different season now entirely. And this was where things started to crumble 
a little bit. And it was such a, a crazy experience because A, we knew we were called to Fort St. John. And B, we knew that um, we knew that as soon as we got there, definitely there was so much confirmation of that. There was a family of people, and I mean a family, like multiple different people who just came alongside us. And we were almost instantly planted into a new family from what we had left behind. God had prepared people there for us. And we had a little bit of land, which we had never had before. And it was just this special thing. But it, but it was not the same as this mountaintop experience that we had had. I mean, the dreams and the visions and the just encounters with God and the the words and what God was doing in our lives on this tiny hour, hour, year and a half in Masset on this island was so intense. And now here we were removed from that. And it was like we were off the mountaintop, but we come down and now we were kind of in the trenches. What made it all more complicated was that I was still homeschooling my kids and I'm still in the same business that I am. And I'm doing more and more and more and more curriculum. I'm getting more stuff in the mail. I'm doing more and more. My kids are needing more from me. We talked yesterday about learning gaps. So I'm starting to identify and see, wow, we are having some gaps because I keep jumping around. And yes, gaps are inevitable, but I'm seeing like I need to actually start to commit to some things. And A, I didn't really know what I wanted to commit to. And B, I felt like I can't because my entire business model is built around new all the time. And I don't think I can give a fair review unless I do it. So I'm stuck a little bit. I've built a business model that is now starting to affect my family. And I was jumping around from one thing to the next and I was dissatisfied. And we talked about this in in, um, our session a few days ago about the story of Gather Round. But that kind of brings us to this point. There was a crumbling of, I'm leading worship. I'm invested in, in church and ministry. I am busy in my job and God is blessing it and it's fruitful and it's growing, but it is affecting our family and I'm homeschooling and my kids are needing more and more of me. Janiya was now five and she was in kindergarten. I now had five of them and it was like, it just, it just came to a head. I don't know how else to explain it. It was like a giant pimple that was just building and building and building. And it came to this head where it was impossible. It was like, I can't do all this. Now, don't get me wrong. I tried. I definitely tried to do all of the things. Um, I went and got I organization. Like, I go and look. This is the season on my blog where you'll start to see all of the organizational tips, okay? I had a, you know, a deep organizing shelf thing. And I was like, surely if I just organize my stuff, I had I tried the file folder system where each kid could pull out a file and I would just prepare it the day before. And clearly, if I could just have better organization, I would be able to do things better so that I could continue to keep juggling all the different balls that were in the air, but it was not working. And I was, I was feeling this crumbling in my family. I was feeling this disconnect with my kids. I was feeling like I was spending all day with them and we weren't connecting. I would wake up in the morning and I would spend all day doing all the things. Sometimes we would do school until six, seven o'clock at night. We would eat dinner. It would be bedtime. I would do all the right things. And we were, we were, I I was with my kids all the time. And yet at the end of the day, there was a disconnect and they would say, I miss you. I mean, have you had that? Have you had that where you've, even my husband sometimes, I mean, when we're together in an RV, we're literally trapped in a tin can, but as we drive down the road and I'm teaching the kids and we're cleaning up and we're unpacking and we're loading and we're doing this and we're doing that and we get ourselves settled and get the kids to bed and get dinner going. And at the end of the whole day, sometimes it's just like, I miss you. We've been literally two feet from each other all day, but I just miss you. I feel like we're not connecting. There is a a, a deeper richness that we're missing out on. And I just, I just need, I want to talk. Let's just talk. Let's just, how are things? You know, I felt that with my kids and I felt like I was, I was losing things in the pursuit and the running of all the things that, that God was calling us to and, and good things. I felt like I was, I was losing things in the process. Now I said in yesterday's session, there are many things that I am willing to lose. I'm willing to lose a clean house. I'm willing to lose my pride. Um, that's a hard one for me. Don't get me wrong. I don't think that I am the super humble person, the pride of having a clean house, the pride of showing the strength that I have it all together is a big one for me. I like to be the one who has it together. I like to have a clean house when people come over. I am very capable 
God has made me very capable. I can do most things. I can. I mean, I, I cut my kids' hair. I can do this. I can do that. I can organize. I can cook well. I can make amazing baking if I put the time and effort into it. I don't have a lot of time and effort to put into it, but I can keep a very clean house. I can do it. And so because I can do it, I want to do it. And I like to be the one who doesn't need anybody and who can do it all on my own. That is that is pride is what it is. Now I'm willing to lay down my pride and have a messy house and have people come over and die a little bit inside of embarrassment, but I know that it is worth the cost. I know that that relationship or that friendship is worth the cost. I'm willing to die to my pride. I am willing to lose, like I said, my clean house and my my wall. I'm willing to lose out on money. Absolutely. That is not, and I do not say that lightly. I know some people are like, I'm not in it for the money. No, no, ask my husband. He's like much more like, well, what is this? I'm like, I don't know. How much does this cost? I don't know. Who cares? <laughs> it's, I'm working on it, guys. He's he's my tether, okay? But I, I, it's not that I'm frivolous. I don't go out and actually spend a lot of money. I, I can't even remember the last time I went shopping, okay? But I just don't care about money. Money is not a, in fact, it kind of annoys me. If I have to go to a bank or or talk about my books, it's just like, it's it's like the worst possible thing to me. I just hate it. I mean, God will provide the money. Money is the least thing, you know? I'm willing that things get dropped and there's things I'm okay with losing. But I am not willing to lose my kids. When I wrote More Than Words Level 3, I did a a study on different missionaries. And I did one each week because one of the things I really believe is important for our youth and specifically middle schoolers is to start to study and identify um, people people who are doing great things. And I think when we study people who do great things, it inspires greatness within ourselves. And especially in the middle school age where there starts to be a withdrawing and a closing in and it's all about me, narcissism. I think the best way to pull our kids out is service and is expanding their view. And one of the ways we do that is inspiring them by exposing them to great people who've done incredible things. Those inspirational stories, Jesus freaks, sad stories, hard things. Do not hide your middle schooler from that. If you see them doing this and you can't even pull them out to do acts of service so they can expand their view that way, then start doing books and movies, watch things with them, expand their view. I always feel like, I remember when Caleb was first, this is such a tangent, but it's important and God wants to say it. I remember when Caleb was learning how to read and I found a book. I don't even remember which it was. Well, I know Old Yeller was one of them, but one was, I think it was Dolphin Adventures or something. I think, anyways, let's go to Old Yeller. I knew that if I could invest my son emotionally in reading, that I would have him forever. I just knew it. It was like a key. It was like, you know, you read the cat in the hat is sat and whatever. You read the stuff, but it, it never really connects. It never really goes deeper. But I knew if I could show my son, if I could make him cry, I knew that if I could give him something that would make him cry, um, that I would have him forever in reading. And it hasn't been like that with all my other kids, but it was just a key I knew for him. And it's the same thing with movies or with sometimes I expose my kids to hard things, things that will hurt their hearts, things that will show them a bit of the brokenness in the world. And I, yes, do it carefully and you know your kids, but I think we have to expose our kids to these things because when they see it, when they see some of the brokenness, there's a compassion that you have when you see that, that you you didn't have before. There's an awareness and an exposure to that that you didn't have before. Back to the missionary stories. So when I was studying these missionaries for this, I saw a pattern. I saw person after person after person, and not all of them, but many of them, who did great and incredible things for God, and they lost their families in the process. I read stories of people that we have put on pistols. I've heard about my whole life. I have talked about my whole life. And when I looked a little deeper and saw the devastation along the way, when I saw the carnage, the carnage that was in their lives, I thought that is wrong. I am unwilling that my call, whether it be worthy, whether it be ministry, whether it be kingdom, whether it be my job, I believe gather around is ministry. It is my calling, but I am unwilling 
that it leave carnage in my wake as far as my children. Now, I'm not saying at the beginning I made a strong statement and I said that our kids are not absolutely everything. They are not the only. God can call us to multiple things. It can be this and that. You can Follow the call of Jesus without losing your kids. They can come along with you if it is his timing, if it is his will, if it is in the right season and it is the right thing, then there is protection and there is covering and there is a way to do it. I believe there's a way to do it, but it takes so much intentionality. It takes guarding. It takes awareness and you cannot be naive and think that that will not be you. You can't. I've seen marriages. You go and study it. You know, I looked up, I looked, go and go and read a little bit more about Mother Teresa, probably the most celebrated selfless person in the entire world and in our entire history. Somebody who laid down her life for the sake of others and was really the iconic picture of being the hands and feet of Jesus. And she wrote things that were basically saying, I don't even believe what I speak. But essentially, I'm trapped in it because this is my life now, and this is what I've chosen, and this is, you know, this is what I do, but I don't even believe it. I don't believe it. I see devastation. I saw, you know, incredible missionaries whose whose kids committed suicide and and called their dad and said, you know, come home. I'm struggling. I, I need you. And their dad would just go to another conference and and come back only to find that their their child was gone, marriages broken apart, husbands and wives divorced, and, and an unwillingness to move or change for the sake of the call. This is not the will of God. This is not the will of God. God can use you no matter what your story is or what brokenness is in your in your past. But I'm telling you that what he's going to ask you to do is possible to do with family. And our picture of doing this alone, of mom and dad, or even just mom, or even just dad, and you leave devastation in your wake is not the will of God for your family. It is not the will of God for your family. There are strategies, there are tools, there are tips. Sure, I can talk to you about balancing homeschooling. I can talk to you about balancing work or balancing your ministry. But at the end of the day, true balance is between you and God, is between you, your spouse, your family, and God. And you will be able to tell when that is out of whack. No, you're not going to take your, 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 your thermometer and your barometer of deciding if that is out of whack based on the fact that your kids have learning gaps. Who cares? You are going to base that barometer on if your kids are not connected to you. If you see them withdrawing from you, if you feel like you haven't talked to your husband, even though you've been in the same room or your wife and you have not been connecting, that's your barometer. You're going to see it when there's devastation. You're going to see it when there's depression. You're going to hear something come out of your kid's mouth that you never thought would happen to you. And this is a warning. It is a flag. It is a barometer. It is a temperature rising saying your house is on fire or there's smoke or it's coming and you need to listen. I'm telling you that what God has called you to do is possible to do with your family. Absolutely. I am not here to just give you tips and tricks for it is possible to walk in your call without losing your family. I am telling you it is commanded that you walk in your call without losing your family. And the second you feel you are losing your, your, gra- your, your grasp over them, the second you feel that there's a tenuous relationship, the second you feel that there is something going on, the second you have that discernment in your spirit, you stop, you listen, you turn, you rest. This call, this ministry, this job, this pursuit, this thing, as worthy as it might be, I'm sorry, but when you have devastation in your wake, it pulls from this. At the end of the day, this and this is all your life. It is your testimony. And the power of your testimony is when these things fit together, not when they are pulling away from one another, not when they are dividing against one another. I see this in marriages. I see people go different routes who have strong callings and they're these power couples and they are divided because they're not together, because they're not united, because they are not one. And instead of of pursuing things and seeing and recognizing and saying, you know what, we need to pull back from this and we need to come back together, they run in the directions after what they think is this higher calling 
calling, but there is no higher calling than our lives. God, we look at the outside. We look, you know, we talked about this in yesterday's session. We look at the outside. We look at what we do and what people accomplish. And we say, these are the things that mark greatness. But I am telling you, the Bible says people are going to go to heaven and God is going to say, I never knew you. They're going to say, I did all of this in your name. And he's going to say, I never knew you. God does not care about what we accomplish. He can use anybody. If you don't do it, don't worry about it. He'll get your next door neighbor to do it. He is less concerned about what you do. He is less concerned about the call and he is more concerned about your heart and the hearts of your children who he has entrusted to you and the hearts of your spouse who you are supposed to be as one. If you feel that things are getting off track, if you feel that things are getting tenuous, you pull back because none of that matters if you are not living out what God says. If you aren't walking out scripture, if you are not walking out relationship and community and family, you want to go pour into other people when your home is falling apart. I'm telling you, that's a disconnect. That's a disconnect. Not that we have to be perfect. Not that I have to come to you and I can only talk to you about marriage. If my marriage is perfect, well then clearly I should never speak about it because my marriage is not perfect. My husband and I are the strongest people on the face of this planet who've been put together. We're like vortexes spinning in opposite directions. And my goodness, things are, are destroyed in our wake. Okay. It is intense. Sometimes we are not quiet. We are not um, submissive, either of us. And we, we, but heads in a strong and powerful and fireworks display all the time. You want me to say only those who are perfect can come before you? No. But those who are fighting for it, those who are hungry for it, those who are pursuing it, those who are trying. If you read my session description for this, my God is calling some of us out into the deep water. Now, I sputter sometimes. I struggle. I might not always be swimming well or relaxed. Okay, the waves might be getting to me. I might have my head dip under every once in a while like you saw in yesterday morning's session, but I'm learning to swim. I'm learning to swim. I'm not giving up. I'm in the trenches here with you. And I'm not here to tell you I'm perfect, but I'm here to tell you I am unwilling. I'm in this tension. I'm walking on this very fine line and I'm learning and I am trying and I'm refusing and I'm contending and saying, I will not allow the weight of the call that God has put on my life to steal away from what he has called me to over here. I am unwilling for family to be the cost. And I will let this be my legacy, not gather round, not the businesses I start, not the books that I write, not the things that I speak. Let my legacy be that I did it with my family, that I connected with my family that I saw their hearts, that I laid down my pursuits and my desires and my furthering my agenda, or even what I feel is the right thing for the sake of someone else, because I'm here to lay down my life for my children and my husband. Let that be my legacy. Let that be what I leave behind. We live in a culture of devastation. We live in a culture where the cost is great and it's so widely accepted, especially in Christian homes. It is so widely accepted that people just accept that this is the cost. They just accept that it's going to happen, that you can't do this and have that, or they try, but this is just so much more worthy. This is so much bigger. The the money, the fame, the platform, the, the honor, the name it name it. There is so much, even within the Christian world, even within building your platform as a worship leader, or as a speaker, or as a pastor, it doesn't matter what it is. The motivation behind all of that is often to get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and the wow and the platform and the fame. And you know, it grows and it grows and this becomes, but I'm seeing soul saved for Jesus. It's so worth it. This is far greater calling. It's going to cost me everything. Jesus said, leave everybody and come to me. And this is what I'm supposed to do. That is not the picture that he paints. Jesus had family. His disciples were his family. He created and cultivated family. Wherever he went, he cultivated 
family and relationship and connection. He was not a lone ranger. He could have been. He needed no one, but he was not alone doing everything he did. He did it in community and in family. And the children that God has given you and the spouse that God has given you is the family he surrounded you with. It is not by accident. It is intentional. The children and the husband or the wife that God has given you is an intentional positioning of people that God has said, I am giving you family. And I want to do a work in and through you as you rub and as you, you iron sharpens iron and as you become one and as you learn how to deal with differences and struggles and, and opposition and, and different ideas and opinions and you learn to walk in unity. There will be such a grace and a favor on your life and you will be able to do so much more than you could alone. I know I'm not giving you the 10 steps. I know I'm not giving you the tips. And I do, I have some tips. I have some tips for how we actually walk through and do this. But I feel like God is putting his finger on the fact that there are those of us, whether we're walking in it or whether we're considering walking in it, that we have accepted or bought into the lie of what our culture is telling us. And it's ironic that I'm talking about this because I have actually received judgment on the opposite end. I have received judgment where people look at me and they're like, why can't you just be content? Who are you to go out and do a business? Your primary call is to your husband and your children. And don't you dare do anything else. That's all that matters. I mean, you can have your little hobby on the side, but you darn well better make sure that this is your number one and that nothing else matters other than that, because this is what God is called. It's the highest calling. Huh? Trust me, I have had that. I am not actually talking about that. I actually think that's a, a twisted form of we take honor and we take um, uh, subservience, which isn't really in the Bible. Submission is in the Bible. But we take these things and we put this jaded picture on it that it's supposed to look like this, this hierarchy, this this you know, this or that, or what it's supposed to look like. Actually, I believe that if my entire everything is based on my children, then like Jonathan said this morning, my identity becomes caught up in that. And one day when my children are gone, I'm going to have nothing left. I believe that if my entire identity and purpose of living is for the sake of my children, that I am not serving them well. I am not serving me well. I'm not serving anyone well because my kids can't be my everything. Jesus has to be my everything. I don't live for the sake of my kids. I love them and I would die for the sake of my kids, but I do not live for the sake of my kids. I live for the sake of Jesus. And I have to, because if anything ever happens in my life that rocks my boat, if anything ever happens in my life where sickness or anything else, I will never be able to stand if my entire identity and my entire faith and relationship with God is only based on what I feel I'm living for. See, when I'm living for Jesus and that is all I am living for, then yes, no matter what happens all around me, I can still stand. Why can I stand? Because I'm living for him. I love my kids, but I'm not talking about living for them. I'm talking about family. I'm talking about cultivating family. I'm talking about God desiring. You want to talk about what revival looks like in families? It looks like families coming together and pursuing the call together. I'm saying don't leave them behind in the pursuit of what you consider to be a higher calling. I'm saying do not forget that God put you in this position in order to strengthen you so that you would not be alone. He gave you these people, these people in your life so that together you would be able to be stronger so you could learn from one another, grow with one another. There's even checks and balances. I am a runner and there are times I feel so strongly from God that I'm supposed to do something and my husband disagrees with me. Actually it happens quite often, okay? Jonathan does not always agree with me. In fact, sometimes he takes, he takes a little extra time. He takes like a couple weeks of like, got to kind of marinate in it, you know, when he prays and, and God gives him a couple dreams and then he wants to find it in scripture. And then he talks to somebody else. He's a processor, but God gave him to me. And I'm learning this where at first I used to resent that or push against that. And at the end, he'd still come to my side and I'd be like, see, I was right all along. We could be two weeks ahead right now, but I have learned that God uses him to temper me. God uses him to slow me down just a little bit because otherwise I would burn out because I am a firefly. I am. God told me one time, super spiritual, but he told me one time when I was, I'm not going to say it. No, I'm not going to say it. Okay. God told me one time in a very hilarious, 
situation that I was, um, he said the picture of the tortoise and the hare. And he said, you, you humans, he said, you have taken the story of the tortoise and the hare, and you have decided that the tortoise is the hero and the hare is the fool. And he said, but Rebecca, I've created you to be the hare. He said, I've created you to run like the wind when I say run. And then I've created you to hide under the tree and sleep. I've created you to dash and then rest. And I've I've found such, you guys, that was four years ago. I, I was thinking about it even today. I think about it almost every day. I think about it all the time. When God spoke that to me, it was like he saw me in a way that no one has ever seen me before. It was like the things that I even judge in myself my intensity and my drivenness and and the fact that I'm always so busy and I'm running and everyone around me seems to be pulling me back. And God gives those people to me so I won't burn myself out. They're a gift and it's not to be resented. But at the same time, I know that God actually fashioned me this way. And that is why he gives me people in my life that will help me not get burned out and remind me of my need for rest. After a convention, after I do something like this, I go and I hide. I hide. I literally, I actually almost get a little bit, I won't lie about it. I almost get a little bit depressed. Like I'm very low. I sleep a lot. I sometimes cry a lot. I feel very empty. It takes everything out of me because I pour out everything. I reserve and hold nothing back. I pour out my heart. And especially when it's an in-person convention, I will stand there until I, I haven't eaten anything. I haven't drank anything I, because I will give you guys everything. I refuse to consider my needs before. Like I'm telling you like I get exhausted I get exhausted and afterwards I hide I hide and I sleep and I rest and I I learn to just embrace who God had made me to be and to stop feeling sorry about the fact that I don't answer people's calls I do not respond to most text messages even my dearest friends even my own mother I will hit decline on a phone call I will not answer a text message because I don't even have the emotional energy to do so and I'm okay with that because God made me to be the hair Why am I telling you this? I have no idea, but I believe there are some of you that need to hear it. I believe that for some of you, God is calling you out into deeper water and he is saying, you have been so afraid you're going to lose your family. And I'm telling you, it's possible to do both. And there are some of you who are doing it and your house is on fire. Your house is on fire. You guys, I've seen it in this past trip with our family has been the hardest, hardest four months of our family's journey together. It has been the hardest four months of our marriage. It has been the hardest four months of our parenting journey. It has been the hardest four months for every single one of our kids. I wish I could protect them from that. I wish that they did not have to go through the grief and heartbreak of of really saying goodbye from their home and their their friends and their family. And I'm watching this, this sad, hard thing happen, but we're going through it together. And we have been trapped in an RV with no escape. And we've had to work through some hard things. And there is so much fruit. There's so much fruit that comes in it. We knew that we needed to come on this trip. And we knew before we even came on this trip that speaking and touring was like a bonus. It's like a great, we can speak and tour. We knew that finding a property was inevitable, that God needed to, this is the next step. And he was calling us here, but we knew that the primary and most important purpose of this trip was for us as a family, because I have been running, creating gather round. I am gone morning till night, running this company and writing this curriculum. I have done far less. You guys know that that's why I'm falling behind on doing the units. I have, I'll tell you honestly, medieval times, no idea when stuff is going to come out. That's why we removed dates. I haven't written. I've been doing this instead. And before this, we were traveling and connecting as a family. I found out that whether I recognized it or not, We needed to connect as a family because there was something that was being lost that I was unwilling for it to be lost. We have connected as a family. We have grown closer together through this hard thing than we ever, ever would have. And I have been forced into intentional time that I would have previously been able to escape and I would have missed. I would have missed the signs. Listen to what God is saying to you. Listen to what he's saying to your family. If he is calling you out, if he is saying there's something going on, if he's putting his finger on something, if you feel like you're dealing with character things or heart things or 
or sickness things or a wrong mindsets or a lack of love in your home. This is a real thing in families. If you are not feeling connected to your spouse or to your children, then I'm telling you, you need to slow it down. You need to ask God to come in and intervene and you need to connect as a family because God does not desire for you to run after the call and forsake the family in the process. He gave you the family so that together you could run after what he has for all of you. And I believe he will be calling families into ministry and into callings and into businesses as units and as families, rather than what we have seen in the past with these bunch of individuals all running out and I will leave my family and I will make the name for myself. You guys, he's doing a new thing. I mean, I believe it will be families that are doing this new thing. So I encourage you, take of that what you will take of that. Do with that what you will do with that. I didn't get into any of my my points that I was going to talk about, but that's okay. We can do another session another time. But be encouraged and just take some time to pray. If you do nothing else today, take some time to pray. Ask God what he's saying to you. Ask him what he's calling you to and ask him to be a barometer in your family right now to take its temperature and to give you some supernatural insight and discernment into what is going on and what you need to do about it. Because I think for most of us, there's some things... There's going to be a little bit of a shaking and a stir up. If we will invite Holy Spirit to come in, he'll shake some things up and he will reveal some things just like when you, you know, leave something and things separate like the milk or whatever else or, or oil and, and vinegar. I don't know. I don't know what picture to give you, but, but he will come and he will cause some separation where some, some things are going to rise to the top and the surface. Have a family meeting. Do what I do. I always say to my kids, and I do this more on a one-on-one -on -one basis, but Go up to your kids one-on-one -on -one tonight before bed and say, is there something you need to tell me? <laughs> you guys, it works. If there's things on their hearts, they will tell you. They will tell you the things on their heart. Is there something you need to tell me? And then ask that of your spouse. Is there something you need to tell me? And they might think about it. I don't know. Is there? But almost always there's something they've been holding on to or something they're processing that they just haven't been talking to you about. To you about. Ask your kids be a barometer and, and see what God is saying to you about how you can move forward into the callings that you have together and united. So that's all. I hope you have an amazing rest of your evening, afternoon, storm, whatever you are, your weather is doing and your time zone is doing and the earth is doing in your area and the sky. Um, join Carrie tonight and Darcy. They're going to be talking about high school and helping you out with sale questions. Don't forget tomorrow is our last day. Um, and yeah, you can watch the replay of this. I hope it was encouraging. And tomorrow we have the marriage one and all sorts of different things coming. So stay tuned for that. And we have another worship and word and ministry time in the morning. But be blessed and um, encouraged for all God has for you. See you later.